Hello and welcome to Allegheny County Libraries. Let's get lit. Well, this is where we talk about exciting titles so you, our patrons, can know what to read next. We will be talking about hot new titles to the library and also still burning titles, which may be older but are ones we have loved. Let's Get Lit is available in video format on the ACLS YouTube as well as in podcast format on Apple, Google, and Spotify, so you can subscribe for updates when we release new episodes. Let's Get Lit will be bi-monthly and we would love your feedback as we do this. Contact information will be in the description as well as at the end of the episode. Any titles mentioned will have links to our catalog in the description as well. Now, let's get lit. I'm Allie. I'm Shane. I'm Liz. And I'm Laura. And today's theme is going to be fantastical and magical titles. One of my all-time favorite ongoing series, they're more like novellas than anything, and that's the Wayward Children series. The first one is Every Heart in Norway by Shauna McGuire. These, uh, this, the overall series, the books can be read separately, but they follow some of the same characters throughout the books. But it is about this kind of idea that these doors can open up to children and the door will lead to a world where they might better fit in. However, at some point that world might kick them out, and in which case they no longer fit into the normal world. And then they end up at uh, the home for wayward children, where they kind of don't fit between this world and that world. And sometimes we get to go through the doors and explore these other worlds, and they are just so they're so captivating for Who me. Who decides such... to kick them out? Um, they kind of have choices. It depends on the world, and they have choices that they can make. And sometimes it's between like their love for their family. And, oh, okay, so it's you based know, on a choice. Yeah. So okay. most of the time, it's some sort of choice that they make. And each world is different, like some, there's like, you have to do like, kind of like favors are kind of how things are exchanged and whatnot. So like each world is a little different and like some of them there's like these dead worlds and then there's water worlds and then there's some that are like candy land. So there's all these different things and there's different rules that apply to each of them. But it is, the series is so good. I just fly through them. There's a new one coming out in January. And it is already in the system to place a hold on. Hopefully, on number one. How many are out? Um, I think this. Three. No, I think this is like the seventh one. Oh, yeah. I lost count of three. Yeah. So I will have to pick that back up. Yes. Yeah. I think there's. This might be the sixth or seventh one, but they're really, really good. And we have them all. I believe so. Yeah. Because okay. I. That's how I read them. I okay. read them all through the library. Ooh. I really love those books. I, I did drop off of them a few years back. I, I love how all the characters are defined mm -hmm. um, and it is like a misfits tale, you know, like you're not, you don't feel like you fit in at that age and these people really don't fit in. Yeah. Um, so they have to find themselves. I don't feel like I fit in at this age though. So. Right. The so, first one's also a murder mystery. Right. And it's kind of scary, it. like some of the depictions. Yeah. Kind of scary. Oh cool. It's really good. My first pick is Isola, which is a graphic novel by Brandon, uh, Brandon Fletcher. Um, I would describe it as a gorgeously illustrated graphic novel. Um, this is a type of the type of story that anyone who likes a Studio Ghibli movies like My, ne My Neighbor Totoro or Princess Mononoke will enjoy. Lush ca uh, color palette. The story involves mythical creatures and fantastical landscapes. I personally really appreciate comics that are confident enough to tell a story using their artwork, and this is definitely one of those. It has. Uh, a lot of focus on uh, panels that just showcase the artwork and the vibrancy of those panels makes you feel like you're seeing another world. The dialogue uh, accompanying some of the panels can get a little bit used to, uh, you have to get used to the flow. It's a whole other world and system that you have to acclimate to, but it really, really works once you put the time in. And Volume 2 just came out of Volume 1 and Volume 2 are good luck. I've been seeing a lot of hype around that yeah, recently. Liz, you're up. Okay. The Alice Hoffman books, all of them have a little bit of fantasy in them. I just finished um, Magic Lessons, but I also read The World That We Knew. So all of them have a little bit of fantasy, which I think makes it to read even better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would never have guessed that I'd like Magic Lessons, but I thought, well, it's a prequel. To Practical Magic, I'll go ahead and read that first. I was not disappointed. It's great. I'm going to talk about two authors that are all things magical and fantastical, which are two writers that are responsible for me loving to read, and that is um, C.S. Lewis, who wrote The Chronicles of Narnia, and J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, The Samarillion, etc., etc. 
Um, they were friends in real life, and they um, had a group of writers that met at the Bird and Baby, which it was a pub called The Eagle and the Child, but they called it the Bird and Baby. They were called the Inklings. I think Dorothy L. Sayers was also a member. Um, C.S. Lewis's brother was involved, and they would read their works aloud. So, I mean, I could, I would just die to be sitting there watching um, Tolkien and C.S. Lewis talk about Lord of the Rings and give each other feedback. Um, but if you haven't read those, you should. Chronicles of Narnia kind of is more uh, for younger readers. I mean, I read them as an adult. You can absolutely. Also, C.S. Lewis is out of the Silent Planet trilogy, but um, you can read those. Would be more for kids. But The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Um, are amazing. Uh, and the movies for The Lord of the Rings, um, Samuel Jackson, who did that? Not Peter Samuel Jackson. Jackson, Peter Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> um, Peter Jackson did them. But Peter L. Jackson. Yeah. Same, oh, I love me some Samuel Jackson. <laughs> all fiction and whatnot. I would say that the movies, The Lord of the Rings movies, are as good as the books, and I very, maybe better. Like, and I never say that but yeah so if you can watch those too but i would suggest reading them as well but um c.s lewis also wrote my favorite book probably my favorite book of all time is called till we have faces which is a retelling of a greek um, tragedy and it's amazing as well but there would be no um stephen king there would be no george R. R. martin there would be no neil gaiman there would be no any of those writers without c.s lewis and tolkien um, they founded the whole thing, and they're amazing. So, also the Hobbit cartoon from the seventies. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, please don't do anything else until you watch this. There's drunk elves everywhere. I mean, the the dragon is so scary. It's just the best thing ever. So, if you haven't watched the cartoon, please do. I think John Ford plays yeah, the director. Yeah. John Ford yeah. does Gandalf, yeah. and his voice is amazing. So, please, please watch that. <clears throat> but yeah. We have all of them. Everything I just talked about, the library system has a print, audiobook, and a movie. We just got new editions of the Lord of the Rings. And the yes, they're pretty. Yeah. They're very pretty. Well, since you're talking about a retelling, Madeline Miller does fantastic kind of mythology retellings. I think pretty much everyone here has read something by Madeline Miller. Song of Achilles is probably my favorite one of hers. A retelling of, you know, Achilles and what his Achilles feel really is. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it much much Achilles heel, but, they but it's work. much different, and you, the, the way she writes characters, I mean, you can't help but just love them. They're so relatable, but at the same time, it's like you know their stories, mm -hmm. but it's such a different twist, and you get to see, like, what could have been in their minds at those moments. And actually, this doesn't even follow Achilles. It oh. follows Troglis, and uh, they, are, they are very close friends. That is what I will say. So. Cersei is amazing too. Yeah. I just reread that actually last month, and. And how come I don't need to read that? Everybody you do. Needs, everybody who's so opinion good. that I respect is like that is such a good that is such a good book, and I just it's on the list, and I just need to do it. Yeah. Yeah, we have them both in the system. Um, Cersei, the book is is such a deep portrayal of someone who was a, kind of like a footnote in the Odyssey. Like she, she was just a witch, and she bowed down to. Uh, Odysseus. Um, I don't think she, I don't think she was given her, her due. Obviously, Madeline Miller does a better job telling her story, um, and it actually has some vengeful violence in it that I really appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a not new you, Shane. That's a new thing for you, Shane. <laughs> and uh, it's well earned, and uh, <laughs> it feels good. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, what's amazing about her writing is that like you can't help but love these characters and when something happens to them like you feel it yeah and that's a good yes yeah, mm -hmm. she's very good at evoking emotion from the reader especially if you only know like the mythical figures as just mythical figures like you were saying achilles heel if you just know that term and you want to yeah. know where it comes from the, these portrayals of all the gods and the titans are so deep and so um Humanistic. It's Plus, you don't have to know necessarily right. who's connected to who. Uh, I guess I'll talk about Snapdragon, which is a uh, J graphic novel by Kate Lay. We have it in print in the library system. Um, Kate is the co writer and cover artist for the Lumberjanes graphic novel series. Uh, it's not my piece. Yeah, Snapdragon is about a young girl who uh, one day works up the courage to rescue her dog from a witch's yard and ends up discovering that being a witch maybe isn't what. 
like what she's seen in the scary movies that she and her best friend love to get scared by. I'm really a sucker for any story that hinges on characters bonding over shared love of obscure movies, and those are central characters do in this book. I also love this book because the fantastical elements are very lightly introduced, and it's a story about untraditional families. It uh, really addresses the roles society expects us to fill and how it's okay to not always follow those rules. And it uses a child's point of view to explore uh, perception versus reality. It has a kind of magical realism and art style that's reminiscent of Steven Universe. It also does this really cool thing where the color palette changes to reflect uh, flashback and memory that's completely different than the main storyline and it works really well to let you know where you are in time and place without actually saying it out loud. I would say it's highly recommended uh, for you if you like books like Raina Telgemeier's Ghosts. Um, and we have it in print. I know I'm going to mess up this author's name, but the book is called The Water Dancer, and it's about the South and slavery, and the author's name is Tanacy Coates. Okay. Yeah. It was a really excellent book, and it has a little bit of fantasy, and it's a little bit of, like, the spirit world in it. Like, his mother has passed on, and it made that story even better. That's, that little bit of fantasy works into the story, and I, it's a really good read. And I don't know whether it's had any awards. What are his I other books? I think so. Um, his, his books are, I see them all the time on like the Goodreads Awards and nominations. and mm -hmm. so. so it has a little otherworldly in it. Yeah. yeah, he does. His writing is really grounded in real life. Like, uh, real life problems, but he can adapt that to fantasy elements, mm -hmm. fantasy settings. The uh, Black Panther series he picked up for Marvel is fantastic. If you like Black Panther, the movie, all the plot line and the uh, character arcs are based on his his uh, Black Panther story. Hmm. I did not know that. Well, I'll talk about Gregory Maguire. Um, he also is another person who is a fan of. Lewis and Tolkien, but he did the Wicked play. That's what people most know is Wicked, mm -hmm. and that's amazing if you haven't seen it. The um, soundtrack's amazing. Um, it's one of my favorite musicals. Did the Out of Oz, so we've got Wicked, Son of a Witch, Blind Among Men, and Out of Oz. So that's the Oz story. And if you're thinking like light, you know, happy, the like the movie, that's not it. They're very dark. Um, they even get a little like political, sociological in there. Listen, there are a lot of political so yeah, they are um, Oz, and it's all kinds of stuff. But yeah. so it's not it's not like a, a light, happy, uh, sing songy read. Um, uh, so and and then he also does Mirror Mirror, which is uh, the retelling of Snow White. Um, he he uses the Borgias to model that after, and then Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister, um, which is the um, retelling of Cinderella, obviously from the um, stepsisters' point of view. I'm gonna say that one's based in Holland. So he does pull. Um, out of those, he does pull like a historical time, and then he sets the story in it. So I really like him, but he, it is a different read. So if you're going into it thinking you're just going to have a light, happy fairy tale retelling, that's not what these are. But they are very well written. I enjoy all of his. Ring Shout by P. I'm going to butcher it. P. Jelly Clark. P. J. E. L. I. Clark. This is a book I just picked up. I uh, heard a lot of good things about it. This book's version of the Jim Crow South, uh, the 1915 American silent film, Birth of a Nation, wasn't just a movie, it was actually a summoning spell that brought demons called Ku Kluxes to Earth. Oh, really? To feed off the hatred of human clansmen. And the book deals with Lovecraftian body horror and a badass heroine who wields a sword to combat the monsters. It also deals with the nature of revenge. <laughs> And um, I keep coming back to that because I'm very basic. <laughs> uh, I really like books that deal with that um, perspective. Remind me not to have Shane ever be mad at you. And uh, <laughs> in, my, in my fantasy, in my fiction, I like that theme. Yeah, okay. This is a <laughs> fresh exploration of that theme. Uh, I would say definitely check it out if you enjoyed the Lovecraft Country series on HBO or the book. This is right up your alley. This is more contained and uh, focused than that, but it's. Sounds like a light read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not light. It's <laughs> no, it's not really late at all. 
Uh, you can listen to it on uh, Overdrive right now, but I've requested for it to be added to the Play Collection. Normally I would want to rave and rave about Neil Gaiman. Do it, but... <laughs> Instead, I'm going to talk about an author that Neil Gaiman actually blurbs a lot, and that's Kat Howard. I think that she's very underrated. She did An Unkindness of Magicians, which is set in a more modern city. And it's about like these different groups of magicians and they're coming together to kind of have like a battle and it is just fantastic. There's also a murder mystery going on. Um, I was just so into it. I actually listened to it within a day because I just had to know what was going to happen. But she also has a collection of short stories which I really love as well. And she takes these uh, just kind of fairy tales that you know and love and turns them into more modern type stories. And there's one that's even based around like uh, Arthur and his round table, and it was fantastic. And she also did one which is Roses and Rot, which is kind of a dark academia type story where they there are these creative people that go to this place to, I mean, they're creating art, but at the end, one of them gets chosen for something, but there's some mysterious things happening there as well. So she, I think she is just such an underrated author. She's definitely one of my favorites. Well, if you like wizard battles, <laughs> um, Jonathan Strange, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, um, I think it's, I can't ever remember if it's Susanna or Suzanne Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E, Clark, I yeah. Susanna, I think you're right, mm -hmm. um, but it is, I don't know why more people don't read it, it's amazing, because it, it's like, talks about how history has left England, and yeah. there's two magicians who are trying to bring it back, but it's not like, this crazy fantastical magic. It's like things that can help practically in life. Like I think it, there it's the Crimean War that one of them like wants to develop that magic to help put their, their country win. And so it's it's really, really well done. And um, she also has a collection of short stories, uh, The Ladies of Grace Not Do. I, I'm sure I butchered that, but we have that as well. But um, read that if you have it, because it's amazing and not many, it's an older book, but I don't know why it doesn't get more mentioned um, because it's really great and we do have it. So. I must say she has a new one out. It's a Paradisi. Yes. Huh? And it is up for awards. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like she's a great and, and she doesn't, it, it's years in between when she releases. But wow. And I think more people will know that Paranisi, they don't, and they're not going to remember she wrote that. but. Give it a give it a shot because it's really good, and we do have those. It is a commitment. It's a it's long a, book. It's a slow burn, I would say, as a of a book. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about which had atelier, which we just added the volumes one through five to our collection. These are this is a manga series um, set in a world where it's thought that for you to perform magic, you must be born with that gift. However, Coco is a young girl who is not born being able to perform the gift, but gift that has always been wanted to. And one day she accidentally casts a spell. She soon finds herself part of a much larger world where there are forces at work to use her in a plot that will upend the established order of magic. I think the beautiful black and white drawings in these larger volumes are really inviting for someone who may not be familiar with or intimidated. They might be intimidated by the manga format. It's also less quirky than your normal manga um, and it has a more traditional pace and a classical panel style. I would say if you're into like the Harry Potter or Percy Jackson um, type of stories, you should check out Witch Hat Atelier. I only have one more title that I have written down to talk about, and that is Strange the Dreamer. Lainey Taylor creates basically her own world of just a, like a whole new mythology type thing in this world. Her writing is so beautiful, and I was in awe the whole time I was reading it. I was like, this is the kind of writer I would want to be. But it is about Laszlo, the dreamer, but he's actually a librarian. And there was this once great city, and then one day it disappears. And in this world, when it disappears, no one can remember that it ever existed, except for Laszlo has like this inkling that the city existed. And then one day these warriors are like, lead us to this city. So you're actually from the point of view from Laszlo as he goes with these warriors, but you're also in the point of view of one of the people that is in this city and kind of overlooking the city and she is like this magical being and her and Laszlo actually when they fall asleep they are in each other's dreams which is how he has the inkling that the city exists but it is so powerful 
everyone that I have recommended it to has just been in all of it as well. The writing is just beautiful. It's just a world that you get just so immersed in. All right, this is a long walk, but I'm going to take it. Um, <laughs> For those of us who are enjoying The Mandalorian, the series thus far has been a distillation of one of the main inspirations for Star Wars, which is Western and Samurai movies. Um, the best of the Samurai genre is the Lone Wolf and Cub manga by Kazuo Koiki. The plot is very familiar to anyone who watches The Mandalorian as it deals with the wandering Ronin and his son who together fend off uh, bounty hunters and others who want them dead. Um, both the protagonists deal with a code, they're um, bound by a code, the Ronin being the Samurai Code, the Mandalorian being the Mandalorian Code. Um, it is incredibly cinematic, so anyone who's not read uh, a comic in a while or, and loves the way that the Mandalorian is told will appreciate it. All of the volumes of the series are available on Hoopla right now. Check them out. All right, I'll say my last one. Um, it's Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. She also wrote The 13th Tale, which is amazing. If you haven't read that one, read it too. Um, but Once Upon a River is a story about storytelling and how um, culturally it evolved and how it impacts life. In the opening scene, it's a group of townsfolks um, in England. They live right off the River Thames, and they are in a, the local pub telling stories. And that's how the story kicks off, and it's lovely, and it's a love story to storytelling. It's worth it. Check it out. Of all the things I've said, which, of course, I think they're worth it, but give this one a try. It's, it's amazing. Okay. Well, I think that is it for all of our fantastical items today. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye. Thank you for joining us for Let's Get Lit. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want recommendations, please contact us either in the comments section, by giving us a call, or by emailing us at letsgetlit at allegheny